pro wrestling talk from the four corners of parts unknown. This is That Wrestling Podcast. Welcome to That Wrestling Podcast, where unlike Vince, if I had a private plane, you would all be welcome to poop on it. What's up, guys? It's Brian. <laughs> Kevin's here. Joe's here. Jay's here. Thanks for laughing at my joke. Uh, you know, we got a, a, a nice show this week. I don't think it's been quite as volatile as last week where we had some rather strong post Royal Rumble thoughts. But I think we have some cool things to discuss. Uh, and it really doesn't matter that, you know, Valentine's Day is around the corner because uh, we always have to show love to the world of wrestling shirts with What Are You Wearing? 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 What are you wearing today? I will start. You could say that this is my my uh, Valentine's crush. No, this isn't the, the CM Punk best in the world shirt. It kind of looks like it. This is my Liv Morgan shirt. Thank you to uh, to Jason, I believe, from the Marchuka crate of the, the TWP Christmas party. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we can say she's my wrestling Valentine, I guess, if you will. Who would like to go next? Shoot, I'll go next. Also, uh, uh, a nice <laughs> gift from the Marchuka crate. Uh, she will not be my Valentine. Uh, uh, but she has three world records, Kevin. She does, and paws out, claws out. <laughs> it is the natty shirt. And, uh, I don't know many. Uh, it's actually a pretty cool looking shirt, to be honest. Uh, it could be a lot worse when you think yeah. of natty, natty type shirts. Uh, I realized I didn't wear it yet. And uh, I saw it and I was like, better time than ever. Five minutes before recording, Laura goes, are you going to take off the sticker? I had the shiny sticker on there. Yeah. And, uh, but no, it's actually, it's, it's a fun shirt. It, really, it is. It's a pretty cool shirt. And Kev, have you, have some of your Royal Rumble winning shirts arrived yet? I know we talked last week that, yeah. oh, they should be here any day now. And did I they? think there's the weather uh, caused big, big problems. So Jay's uh, have arrived. The others have not. As of okay. Yeah, it's still so. on my uh, email saying it's on its way. And it was supposed to be delivered on the 4th. Yeah. Oh, but I think okay. it got routed through Indy. We had like mm-hmm. a foot and a half of snow last yeah, week. So. True. Eh, they'll get here when they get here. All right. Well, it looks like uh, the rest of the guys have shirts that represent male wrestlers. So we'll uh, turn it over to Jason. Yeah. Um, I bought a uh, shirt that I saw recently on uh, my, in my email from homage. They did some love for the road warriors slash Legion of doom. So I got the Legion of doom logo T now from homage. And then uh, the, they got a second one that is like the road warriors from like the NWA. Like when they oh, look yeah. completely different and like just toned down and thin. Uh, so I got that one too. Real quick though, I want to talk about the WWE pop-up shop that, op- that opened this oh, week in yeah, LA. Great idea. Yep. So um, LA is hosting the Super Bowl, if you didn't know, and LA is playing in the Super Bowl, which is cool for the city. Uh, but WWE looking to get the, the jump on, you know, 100,000 people coming from other cities They opened up a little pop-up on uh, Fairfax and uh, Melrose in Hollywood. And if you've been to a pop-up store, it's basically just a couple racks in an abandoned store. And guess what? That's what it was. It was uh, eight racks of (laughs) T-shirts in an abandoned (laughs) store. And uh, I'll post some pictures on uh, our social media. Oh, good deal. um, You know, they had the WrestleMania Hollywood shirt getting ready for next year. They had WrestleMania Dallas shirts. Um, they had Los Angeles 316 in purple and gold and blue and white, which was cool. And then they had a couple WWE LA shirts. I bought one. It's a white shirt. I probably should have wore it tonight, but whatever. Um, and it, it, it's a takeoff of the LA Clippers, um, their Vice City looking uniforms. It just says Los Angeles with the WWE logo. And then I got this NWO one that's t- 2022 Los Angeles with the NWO logo. Um, mm, I went, I, cool. you know what? I've never had an interest in, in a, a particular shirt until I saw it. And then they didn't have it in my size. For, I almost bought the bloodline shirt. I have no idea why I was just there and I'm like, well, shit, I might as well just buy it. But uh, they didn't have it in my size. So um, 
if you're in the Los Angeles area this weekend, go check out the WWE pop up because while it was minimal, it was still cool. And I would imagine other, mm-hmm. you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it happens a couple more times in the next calendar year before Mania comes to LA. Uh, but you never know. Maybe they'll do a pop up in your town as well. So that's awesome. Yeah, look forward to seeing those pictures. I saw too on, on the socials that the Miz uh, showed up at there at some point. Oh, I think that's cool. he's, he's been in town doing some social media or media stuff with the Super Bowl as well. So he um, wasn't so there when I was there. Yeah, you know, the odds of that, right? Uh, but that's awesome, man. Uh, definitely glad you got to check that out. And Joe, what is uh, your shirt entry for tonight? Uh, I'm just wearing a uh, rock hardest worker in the room project, uh, rock Under Armour shirt. Because yeah. it's comfortable and it's wrestling ish related and it makes sense with the uh, five count for later. Uh, you know what? It's yeah. it's kind of MMA related too. I don't know if you know this. Yeah, now that he's a uh, sponsor, the, the, the Pro- Project yeah. Rock is the official footwear provider for the UFC, uh, which, which is have cool. A pair of their shoe, his shoes, and they are pretty, they're pretty cool. I mean, I've got cool. I've got a few pair of the Rock shoes, and yeah, it's a good it's a good little walk around shoe. So it makes sense. And Dwayne's been have, involved with some of the- breaking news right now. Kevin? Starting off with some breaking news here. <laughs> the Guinness Book of World Records has just contacted us that Kevin is the only person in the world who ever owned a K Dog, Natty, and two Lex Luger shirts. So, congratulations. Kevin. Congratulations for making the Guinness Book. Yeah. Any and words? Kevin. Because you're a part of this show, I get all that, and I I own that uh, IP from your. Uh, Record setting day. Are you frozen? But man, how can I, I make this? An, he's, he's, he's how do I make this an he's NFT? <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, wow. Kevin. I, 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 I'm not, I need to find that 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 K Dog shirt, and then I go back in time, Joe, and I'm like, why didn't you buy that thirty dollar talking K Dog? Yeah, the trash oh. talker that went. I'm K Dog. Totally. We'll you can probably lay. find it on eBay. I know. Yeah, but oh. it's like it's like a couple hundred bucks. I if you at, have it at, like at that wrestle pod, <laughs> let us know <laughs> at TWP underscore Kevin. He will buy it from you. He does not need to put his son through college. He needs talking K Dog. <sighs> Funny. There With it saggy is. Saggy pants. <laughs> that was the style at the time. <laughs> All right, let, let's get out of the business. So AEW Dynamite last night. I, this was one of the better shows they've had me invested in from start to finish in quite a while. Uh, the anticipation was building since Friday night. Old Tony Khan on the Twitter, he tweeted that the forbidden door was opening on Dynamite for a new wrestler to debut against Isaiah Cassidy, a private party, with the winner going to the Revolution ladder match. And uh, Tony, he kept on tweeting. Uh, the perfect person referenced for the Forbidden Door, uh, and uh, along with the debut match, they were one and the same. So the speculation was all over the place. Well, is it going to be Karrion Cross, Shane McMahon, Bray Wyatt, Braun Strowman? Uh, the leading choice online, including our, our that wrestling podcast Twitter poll, was a debut of Keith Lee. But that begged the question. That's not really, in my understanding, a forbidden door. He's a free agent. So what are you talking about here, Tony? Well, not only did Keith Lee show up, but also New Japan Pro Wrestling star Jay White. So we had two big debut appearances on Dynamite. Love to get your guys' reaction to each of these. Uh, Jay, you can start us off. Yeah, so Tony Khan just needs to shut the fuck up. (laughs) Whoa! (laughs) Hey, yo! Again. (laughs) It would have been a better reaction if it was a surprise when Keith Lee's music hit. Two, it's Keith Lee. It's not that big of a deal. Brian, you were right. He was a free agent. Right, right. So now now the Jay White appearance, okay, that makes a little more sense as the forbidden door because Jay White is involved with New Japan. And I... Got my first taste of seeing Jay White in action this year because he showed up on Impact. And when I went to that New Japan show at the LA Coliseum oh, yeah. uh, right, late right, in right. 2021, he was there. So uh, I'm pumped for Jay White. Keith Lee, eh, let's hear how he talks. Let's see if he talks like a human yet. <laughs> and three, Tony Khan just needs to shut the fuck up. Shut uh, the fuck up. First Christian, now this. Like, just shut the fuck up. 
Kevin had the fun line in our text because he wasn't able to watch live. And when we gave him the spoiler, he goes, but did Keith Lee talk like a human? And I said, <laughs> he did not talk at all. So <laughs> that is uh, a question to be answered. Uh, Joe, your thoughts. My thoughts is this reeks of Dixie Carter in like 2008 mm. when she was uh, tweeting all the time, the greatest debut in the history of our sport every single time when it was anybody who came from WWE. So I agree with you, Jason. He's got to stay off Twitter. Look at the last, like the big debuts that they had where it wasn't spoiled with any hype. CM Punk, we all knew. Sting was, was the only it. one. Sting no, was the Sting one that nobody saw coming. Adam yes. Cole at All Out. There was at least some speculation. There on was that. some, but it wasn't. But it's not like it's yeah. not like Tony Khan was saying, "Oh, right. it's gonna be a great show, right. baby." Correct. Like he wasn't saying stuff like yes, that. Were, and Brian Danielson, that. it's like, yeah, I know you, you, but you've been saying Ronda Rousey was also gonna come back for three years, so you finally got that one. Right. <laughs> the guy that one right too. <laughs> but Shut Sting, up, Joe. Uh, Andrade was a good debut. Andrade was no, Vicky Andrade was a good until signing, Vicky not a good debut because of fucking Vicky Guerrero. Yeah. But it was but a surprise. The, the right, yeah, the right idea of a surprise. Right. So if right, you that's, wanted that's to be a big, I think he jumped the gun because the they're caring about ratings and it went under a million. So yes. had to get, and they went one point one million. So the rating went up for this. So it worked for what he wanted. But when's it going to backfire? Stay off Twitter. <laughs> you can As say I, it, Joe. You can say what I said, Joe. Stay off Twitter. He's doing his job. What do you no, think, Kevin? He's doing his job. He got he got exactly what he wanted. He won't stop. But ratings don't matter anymore. Rating well, ratings. He probably with, think differently. With, with, exactly that. He's he's how old is he? He's he's younger than us, right? He's, Great he's question. Thirty. Very close. We'll we'll look it up. Uh, stats, stats, stats info. And like, yeah. He, he's. I feel like he he uh, might be four, early late thirties, early forties. Like yeah. kid in a candy store. That that's the thing he wants. He wants to be Joe, cool. He's Joe trying to got be it cool. right. Joe got it right. Dixie Carter. Tony Khan is Dixie Carter. And Tony Khan great... is thirty nine years old. It'll be forty in October. He's he's like okay. If he if he's Dixie Carter, he just has a lot more talent around him. And when he gets somebody, he gets excited, and he can't hold the secret. So that's why he gives a little teaser. Yeah, so he just needs to shut the fuck up. But he, I, but but I, I did I did read a, a I did read something like when he tweeted the whole forbidden door like uh, Jay White wasn't like originally supposed to be on there and it was a last minute thing. Yes, and so yes, that yes, wouldn't backfire his tweet. He right. backpedaled. He so, backpedaled on his. So he had to. Prediction. Yeah. So yeah, Inst- and instantly that was the reaction online when the tweets came out on Friday of like, but if it's Keith Lee and he's a free agent, what do you mean forbidden door? And he's going to sign like it. Uh, it's not how it works. And yeah, he admitted that after dynamite last night, he's like, I realized essentially I realized I fucked up. So Sunday night I was able to get Jay white. So I guess props for being honest, but you know, it goes back to what you said. Hey, maybe don't tweet and then you don't have to cover your ass that way. Um, the, all that aside, I thought, you know, the, the reaction to Keith Lee was really good. I thought he looked great. Um, you know, the crowd appreciate him. He, there's no reason he can't be a star, right? I mean, he's just, he has such ability um, that, you know, I, I just hope he doesn't get lost in the shuffle. I don't want to hear in three weeks mm. that he's going to be on AEW dark against Luchasaurus or something, you know, that worries me because of all the signings um, and Jay white. I'm, I'm interested just because that one has such a history that they already teased in that little 20 seconds that he was on of, you know, him and Kenny didn't get along and, and the whole, the bucks are there and Kenny's gone and uh, Adam Cole's got, um, O'Reilly and, and um, Fish and, and like there's a whole story there from the New Japan days that's all going to come together at a head I think at some point if it if it you know plays that, itself outright I would imagine that that'll be the blood and guts match this yeah year. sure sure the cage Ooh, the double yeah. cage three teams um, don't forget the ball pit ball pit included <laughs> um, ball pit included uh, the ball and, pit. And, and Jay White I believe he runs with. Uh, the Gorillas of Destiny, yes. uh, Tonga Loa and 
Tonga lay. I had a, there, there's so there's there's probably more coming, uh, which is exciting. And the Keithley thing, Brian, you thought he looked good. You just meant physically, right? Because I thought he looked gassed in that match. Um, either the only part I'll say that was I don't know if it was post. Yeah, it must have been post match when he had the. I'm catching the one private party member and now yeah. he's down. I caught the other guy. Like he barely got him up for that power bomb. That was, that was like the, six minutes into the match. Yeah. Well, I, you know, listen, that's probably the first time he's wrestled in a, a couple of uh, months. Right. So he, he I, just got, he just got married on Saturday. I imagine there's some uh, post wedding hangover. Uh, if you know what I mean us. from that, coitus. Um, coitus. He, probably, <laughs> he probably had sex with Mia Yim. Boom. Good for Keith Lee. Um, so yeah, but no, I thought just his his presence is there. I mean, that first throw of Isaiah across the room, across the ring. What's that? He's limitless, of course. He's yeah. supposed to be, but he supposed to be. reached no. his limit. <laughs> it, <laughs> Night well, one. It was it, yeah, it, it was what it was. It wasn't a 20-minute classic or anything, but I thought <laughs> it was a, a good reintroduction of who this guy is. And we'll see. Hey, he he's admitted it you know, before his release, he had. He was gone for a long time because he had some COVID related health issues. He wasn't mm-hmm. cleared. He had a heart issue. So he's probably not even 100% physically yet. So, yeah, I mean, there, there's a room to improvement. I'd certainly agree with that. Oh, it's only a matter of time before he ends up on dark or paired with Mark Henry. That, that would And suck. then for me, but nobody's given props to Isaiah Cassidy. Well, he, he's, he's going to be good. machine last Oh, yeah. That, that first throw Bump was amazing. Bump machine, man. Give that guy some love. Oh, yeah. And, the first uh, throw was amazing. And I, I don't know if it's real or if I just missed it. Matt Hardy just ditched them and ran through the crowd. That yeah. is a Jeff Hardy. Uh, yes. Spoiler. Yeah. That, there, he's coming. I didn't, so, I didn't catch it till after. I did. But somebody when he left through the crowd, I'm like, Jeff did that. And that's been a big part the past couple weeks. Shivani had a line alluding to that. He goes, that's pretty erratic behavior if you ask me, <laughs> which is like exactly what they said for Jeff Hardy. Yeah, so I don't know what's coming. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, look, Keith Lee's cool, but I need more. I yeah. need a lot more. I, I, he'll get a bigger chance than he did on the main roster. Give me NXT, Keith Lee. You know, yes. at least. Yes. Don't, don't put him on Dark or Dark Evolution. Yes, please don't. Keep him off Rampage. Make him a big deal. Agree, hundred percent. All he has to do is do the Wardlow thing of go in there, beat guys up for three minutes, and then leave. You don't. Yeah, even but Wardlow do already does that with him. Yeah, but the, eventually the two monsters will meet, or they need to team up somehow with, with Hobbs. Yeah. Give me my yeah. Wardlow Hobbs prediction. <laughs> the, the beef house. <laughs> The B team. <laughs> we'll see. There, there's a lot of possibilities. I just, yeah, I hope he gets the yeah. chance that it didn't well, it happen. Mark for Madden him tweeted Vegas. on Wednesday. He said, "Yeah, sign more guys." Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, listen, sign more guys. That's sign the problem. We don't. I don't want him. He's he's too special. This isn't when they brought in. Um, oh God, what's his name? He was Brian Cage. Where's Brian Cage? Been? No, no, no. Just, just some of the guys recently. Um, Tony Nese. Tony Nice, yes, I was like Tony something. Like he was, he, he was in the crowd. In the crowd. Like what a big deal. He's Brennan Wash. Even you know, even you know, Fish and O'Reilly. Like th- those guys are special, exactly. but right. But Keith Lee, I think, just needs to be on a higher level. Not all the and until and until this week, Adam Cole has been Mister Rampage. Yes, yes, he has. Yeah, put now, him on Wednesday. Contender. I want to get in. I'll get into that. I mean, all right, all that's right, what it looks right. like. It's it's happening. I mean, like I said, I thought top to bottom, fun show. The the MJF segment. Um, was really fun. I just love the celebration with like them all jumping up and down. And I mean, he's just such a star. Um, you know, it set up the mystery partner match with a uh, punk and Mox. Punk was fun on Twitter. If you guys saw that, he goes like, Samoa Joe, are you in the country? Dan Housen, can you help me? <laughs> <laughs> so that, that was fun. Um, Santana Ortiz, uh, Jericho and Hager next week. That that seems to be a, a fun split. We'll see what happens there. Um, the main event, the Texas death match. Wow. Um, this was a car crash. Um, that blackout that uh, Lance hit to a pangman on the steps. 
with the steps turned sideways out of the ring, I, oh. I literally yelled, holy shit, out loud. So did that, I. I. That was I yelled, crazy. I've never seen that before. Never. I thought it was going to be reversed when you see that, Ooh. and he did it. I mean, that was fucking dangerous. Um, thoughts on the match, guys? I, I know, Kevin, you, you said you didn't get to check that out yet, so I'll, I'll start <laughs> no, with you, I'm cringing, just thinking about that moment. Oh, I, don't know what, I don't know what that is, and I'm visualizing oh, yeah. like back pain and Back pain is the, the right <laughs> visualization. Um, Joe, the, the match and, and Adam Cole comes out after the fact. Looks like he's uh, making his intention known. He wants to be next. There was a lot of moments where I was watching and I'm like, ah, or ow. Like basically yeah. it felt like I was watching a old Walter match if he did death matches. Okay. Because it's like you felt the pain from both guys. Uh, I could have done without Jake out there. They weren't needed. All I didn't think that was, was that just, bad, actually. All they were doing was just basically having the camera pan on them instead of the what the match was supposed to be. That's only that's the only thing I would have changed was just have the have the old guy stay in the back, let these two go. I love what Hangman tweeted out uh, today was, uh, "Man, don't you hate bleeding every once? I'm a tired month? of bleeding every month. I hate exactly. bleeding every month. There's something like a, in. like a period. Yeah, all, yeah. all the all yeah. the women I, in the I, wrestling universe said, hey. I, I, I thought it was I thought it was a good match. I thought it was exactly what it was supposed to be. I heard a lot of complaints about it, saying it was violence just for violence. But I felt like they told a story. Oh and yeah, Adam, I, I, and Adam I hate... Cole coming out just holding the belt. He did set it up. He said, once you're Bullet Club, you're Bullet Club forever. So mm -hmm. they were part of a group. So he wasn't going to attack them. He just basically went and gave him the belt. My, my oh, turn. I didn't even think of that. Okay. Yeah, he, he said that's that good. backstage to the Bucks. Yeah, I, I know that, but I didn't even put that thinking. into, I didn't even put that together with, with Hangman. Um, it was weird that it was a Texas death match in like Columbus, Ohio. Yeah, they were in Atlantic City. Yeah, Atlantic City. <laughs> Same thing. Same right. thing. But that's that's Lance, I guess. He's a Texas uh, guy. I guess it's 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 a millennial millennial cowboy thing. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I hate to be the spoiler guy, Kevin, but I, I'm going to. They took off the top rope, Jake and uh, Dan Lambert, in order to prevent the buckshot lariat from Hangman. Like, so right ah. away, right away, there's this visual early on of like, what the hell is going on? Because you got no top rope in the ring. And, uh, you know, you just have to check it out there. There's one part I will say uh, that even I was like, OK, do you have to do that? What did Lance do with the fork? Right. Yeah, he was forking around. man. When, it was crazy. And all then, over all over what, Atlantic City. Forking what he around. did, <laughs> what he did with it after the the stab oh yeah yeah it yeah. was good i'm not even i went oh kevin you no. need to watch this you need to watch. No. i love it like, it or something i'm like well this you'll have to rules. see yeah i oh, love yeah. it that, even i was like okay okay let's loved it let's calm it down a little there Lance. but uh no that was great way way exceeded my expectations uh adam cole you it sounds like yeah revolution they'll, they'll build to that so that could be fun um so all in all great dynamite We'll uh, we'll see who comes up with that. It just for, sucks because uh, Lance Archer is proving how great he is, and now yeah, there's nothing for really him to good. do. Nothing for him to do now, which sucks. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, per everyone's predictions, he'll get pushed on further because Keith Lee should be rocketed. That means Lance should go away, right? Yeah, he'll, he'll be on dark. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, yeah. Well, that's the that's the balance they got to try to find with the all the guys they sign and all the guys they sign more in. guys. Sign more guys. Where's Jake Atlas been? Oh, he, I think Red he got Tiger hurt. Been? Oh, I think really? he got hurt. Yeah, I think in that first match he had with Adam Cole, I heard he uh, he hurt his knee legitimately, and oh, was like, okay. "I'm gonna be out a bit." But but no, Where's... it's not like Tony Tony Nice. We said about it like, yeah, this. I saw he put on Twitter, "I'm taking indie bookings." So it's like, okay, it's, I, Kyle O'Reilly could have just stayed in NXT 2.0. He would have been on TV more every, <laughs> yeah, every him, week. Him, him and Vaughn Wagner, yeah, but that's okay. <laughs> um, all right, let's so let's rewind it back a little bit. Uh, SmackDown Friday night. The question was answered is this goldberg yes yeah. it is goldberg it's goldberg <laughs> goldberg's back he challenges roman for a match they're calling it elimination chamber right i, I have in my notes crown jewel and i think that's wrong. It's elimination chamber elimination chamber yes um well and Allah in five yes <laughs> that's that's our all in right. five elimination chamber your interest level in goldberg versus roman kevin you can start is this like a one one to ten or just an over over? Yeah, however you want to say it, one to ten, one to ten. I'm, I'm gonna say two. 
I, 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 the nostalgia act is always there. It's kind of fun seeing him gas out on the way to the ring, doing his high kicks and, and, and breathing like a dragon. But like, I don't know. I, I feel like it's going to be a sloppy match because Roman's going to have to dial it back where Goldberg's going to go full force. Like Jay, we saw Goldberg Lashley and Lashley, I feel like had to carry him. It was very sloppy trying to pick him up. Roman's no small guy either. Like I, I feel that Goldberg will look great for the first two minutes and then sticking with the two, everything's two. I think, I think we saw like, a different match at SummerSlam, Kevin, because I liked Goldberg last year. I thought it was no, good. it was good. No, it was good. But I feel that he like when, when he would try to like lift up Bobby, like he couldn't get it. Like I, I just feel like there was some some uh, uh, we're back. You know, when you think of Goldberg, Jack Cameron, I think it was Rosie that WWE had on Facebook today. Like a, a, a oh, I saw that clip. Yeah, mm-hmm. where he like lifted up four hundred pounds, right? Not that I'm saying it's gonna be bad. I just feel like Roman's at the top of his game. Goldberg wrestles what once or twice a year. So I just think there's gonna be a stamina issue. I think less six minutes. I think I think it's gonna be. I think it'll be okay. But I'll always not dislike Goldberg coming back. It's just he's not gonna be. Maybe maybe a WrestleMania match. Now that well, Shane's not gonna be there, who knows? But Jay, yeah, Jay, I want to go to you because yeah, that that goes to my next question. Um, Goldberg Roman. You think back, Goldberg beat Kevin Owens. For the championship to take it to Mania, Goldberg beat the Fiend in Saudi Arabia. I think it was right. Mm-hmm. Can Goldberg beat Roman? Do you think that could happen? I'm at a nine for this match. I am excited. I am all in because You're all we didn't in. get it at WrestleMania. <laughs> we didn't get it at WrestleMania a couple years ago. Right. Two, there's backstory there. Everyone says, oh, we need stories. We need storytelling. We got fucking storytelling. It's perfect. And finally, I'm even okay if Goldberg wins the title because Brock can win the universal title or the the whatever title in the elimination chamber. Raw champ, yeah. And if Roman loses, we still have the main event for a title at WrestleMania. Now, who does Goldberg get? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I would love to see Goldberg Big E. That's like that dream yeah, match for everybody. Yes. I would Goldberg and Riddle would be fun because of yep. the you're not my bro, I'm not your bro <laughs> thing. Yes, I mean, uh, but as far as Goldberg Roman, I'm in because okay. this gives Roman something to do until WrestleMania. And if Brock wins, like we all think he's going to, have some, you know, so, some nefarious means involved. And because it's in Saudi Arabia, the prince right the prince got the pencil. <laughs> Goldberg's undefeated and all I possible. Ends. Right. And, oh, and that's Mansoor. and that's it. Yeah. He said and Mansoor. Mansoor. Goldberg they, Mansoor. They, call, <laughs> they call Goldberg the Monsoor of America. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> there. But Joe, yeah, I literally get the chills thinking that I'm like, holy shit, Goldberg beat Kevin Owens, and we all said, fuck you. He beat the fiend. We said, fuck you. Could he do it to Roman? I mean, come on. I what is this? I don't, I don't think he's going to win, but I got to disagree with Kevin. My excitement level for this match is an eight because wow, of the story. Okay. Uh, this was supposed to be WrestleMania two years ago because of COVID and then right. WrestleMania at home, too big for one night. We got <laughs> thrown, thrown in Braun Strowman, who wasn't even on the card, and then he leaves as champion night one. That was... a. Uh, so this is a spear versus spear, the story that we were waiting for. We didn't know we were waiting for it for two years, but I'm actually looking forward to this match. And Jason, you were at SummerSlam, though the excitement doesn't really count, but the SummerSlam match with Lashley did not look well on television. The crown jewel match, Lashley versus Goldberg, was a way better than the SummerSlam one. So if he brings that type of match with <laughs> okay. you know, Roman... I think we're going to be in for an entertaining show. And the good thing about Goldberg now, he's not banging his head off the wall before he comes out anymore. So his lesson. Yeah. <laughs> after Tim and after Taker. that Undertaker match. So, I mean, it's, it's going to be good. It's going to be awesome. And I'm all in for it. So 
all in for all in. What about um, you, Brian? What's your one out of 10? So Kevin's a two. I'm a yeah. two. Jason's a nine. Going um, on 10. I'm, go- I'm going to go like six because of the, the, the reason I take it down a couple notches is because of that revelation of like, holy shit, Goldberg could win. And I, I don't want Goldberg to win. But I don't put it a, a buried as a two because – Goldberg did get the win over Lashley at that last Saudi Arabia show. So at least there is some sort of like, okay, he's not just showing up and saying I'm challenging. Like the last match he had, he won. He beat uh, Lashley, the current uh, heavyweight champion. So uh, at least that made sense from that standpoint to me that I could at least accept that. Okay. He has a legitimate claim to say, I want a championship match. So for that, I'll say a little excited, but I don't want him to take the championship at Mania, but we shall see. Uh, let's see. What else? Speaking of um, Mania, Ronda Rousey, she chose Charlotte uh, after the prior Monday where I didn't think she came across very well. She just was didn't look like she wanted to be there. She hates everybody. For, for SmackDown, she was smiling. She, she slapped hands with the fans. I thought she got some pretty decent cheers while she challenged Charlotte at WrestleMania. So uh, I just, not, not really much to talk about, I don't think, but just I was happy to see where that's going because I was kind of worried after what happened on Monday where I'm like, oh my God, they're all, they all hate everybody. And whether it's Becky or Charlotte, I don't think it's going to go well with the fans. This, this was a good start for that. Um, and speaking who, of mania, oh, go ahead, Jay, sorry. Who do you guys think is the last entry for the women's elimination chamber match? <sighs> I was going to get into that next week, but maybe it'll pop up this week. Um, let me think on this for just a moment. If Alexa? it's going to be uh, Alexa, Haley. I'm just going to say, if it's someone that's already there, I think Alexa is prime. If it's somebody making a return, Lacey Evans. I okay. Mean, say Lacey. I was, I'm thinking Bailey. I, Ooh, I so any of any of those three, I think would be yeah, great. yeah, any, any good three, one. Any Kevin three. thinks Natalia. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure she'll be taking care of the cats. Uh, not able to make it to Saudi Arabia. I mean, I think I, it it sounds like Bianca. The rumor mill is yeah, Bianca's gonna win and whatever. So, I I tend to think maybe it's somebody who's not a super major player like a, a Bailey. Two drops, but yeah, but uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, two drops, two drops in there. Yeah, she's in there already. Okay, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see what shakes out. Lacey Evans, I'm I'm not ruling her out. Uh, I like that Strider. your thought there, Jay. Um, okay, to be continued. Uh, but yeah, speaking of mania, so Shane McMahon, we all know he got sent home. Um, and the story came out this week that WWE Creative is scrambling for a quote unquote new major attraction match to replace the rumored match of Shane versus Seth. Uh, Jay, you're going to be there in Dallas. So you can, you can play Booker now, man. What would you like to see for a new major attraction? There's only one. There's only one thing that can classify as a major attraction. And that's Stone Cold Steve Austin. Hell yeah. Making a return in Dallas at WrestleMania. It's the oh, only the, thing the one last match classifies as a major attraction. Verse doesn't matter. Monsoor. I don't think it matters. <laughs> Monsoor. No. Monsoor. Um, okay, let's let's think about this. Let's let's play some fun. Yeah. I thought you were gonna say Undertaker is the only one that counts as a major attraction. Uh, I mean, we just want him to have the Hall of Fame remember, night. This is Shane yeah, I just want the Hall of Fame show. Yeah, we I just want the, the Undertaker <laughs> Hall of Fame. That's all we want. I'm all about it. Um, oh, speaking of, of, of while I think about who Austin could wrestle, uh, something came out this week online. I don't know if you saw Mark Yeaton, who is the uh, – he was a referee, bell ringer, and the guy that was responsible for throwing the beers to Stone Cold yes. all those yes. years. Are, want people are pushing hall. for him to go to the Hall of Fame. Me included. I'm like, Mark Eaton for Hall of Fame. Absolutely. Let's do this. Um, if we're going to do... Okay, so if we're going to do Stone Cold against a, 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 a non-current roster member, but I don't know what the hell status of Triple H is. Right. If it's on roster, I, I really... Kevin Owens. Thank you, Joe. Yep, I was going to say two Stunner. letters. Okay, because he yeah. needs to Let's be in Texas. He has to be in oh, Texas. Oh, that's got great. The ball. Good point. Yeah. <laughs> Good point. They love him in Texas. Wait, they love him in Texas, yes. But that's great. Uh, 
That's yeah, a great that's idea. That's the only one that makes sense. That's Anybody else have any uh, major attraction match concepts that, that cross their mind? I did not, honestly. <laughs> maybe maybe Bray makes his return after a yeah, year away, but not likely. Yeah. Kevin, you got one? I was trying to think of something like a, a like a, a bad bunny, like celebrity wise. Right. Mm. But I thought, then I thought I, about that I started too. thinking, but I'm like, okay, bad bunny was just in the rumble. I know he was just last year's WrestleMania. And he's got touring day. He's got dates every night that week of oh, Mania. Really? So Does yeah. he? Okay. he's in Miami. I, I was earlier. like, I was like, would I want to see Bad Bunny again? I'm like, you know what? I actually wouldn't mind. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Like, on like, him a one on one. And then like, at WrestleMania hours later. Yeah, like uh it, it's gotta be big. I, I when you said Stone Cold and then Joe, when you said Kevin Owens, that that'd be good. Yeah. Think about that's, it. I think KO that's mania, KO stun mania, like shirt, mm-hmm. like stunner mania, like. If we're gonna well, go is, celebrity, Johnny Knoxville makes sense because of his recent yeah, oh, involvement. Definitely, well, Johnny Knoxville but, versus Sami Zayn. But we're talking yeah, about like, that's you know, the one. next the next KO shirt is KO six. Mania Six, which Ooh. was Ho- the ultimate uh, challenge. Uh, yeah. It was Hogan versus Warrior. Yep. Oh man, that that's the merch I would get <laughs> on day one uh, to see that shirt. Oh, that would be cool. So, so all right. we all agree, Stone Cold's pretty much the only major attraction that would suffice as a Shane McMahon replacement. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to wrestle. He doesn't need to. He's got another beer coming out. Yeah, but I heard (laughs) like, you know, he would want one more match. I heard that. Well, everybody wants one more something. Yeah. Christian still wants one more match. (laughs) He he did for a long time. Too busy being the new Marco. Um yeah. I'm curious to see what'll I'm curious to see what'll happen. Yeah. I mean at this point though, they have enough superstars why do they need an outside attraction yeah well and that's yeah that's the big question i think a lot of people have when it comes to you know why does brock have to win why does ronda have to win well because if you want the mainstream attention if you want your champion to to have an interview on sports center if you want to fill up that hundred thousand seat building two nights in a row they were going to anyway you got what? Uh, they, they sold the tickets before even one match was announced. For for one night, yes. For two nights, I'm not as confident. That's a lot to ask people. Uh, we'll see, season, Jerry. Uh, we'll I will make sure. I'll go and count. Yes, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Make sure every seat is. Hey, green shirt guy, stop moving! I already oh, counted my. you. <laughs> <laughs> Kick him out. Uh, all right. Yeah, well, that, Stone that's Cold fun. KO. Yes, yeah. that I'm is what at... I want. That is what I want. Stone all Cold right. KO. Well, you didn't even know you wanted it. I know. Yeah. I know. But now I can't stop thinking about it. I know. All right. Fingers crossed on that. Um, speaking of, of Raw, since KO talked about his love for Texas and having to be there, uh, the show started off with RK Bro and the Alpha Academy in the Quiz Bowl. On a scale of one to ten, why do you give this segment a twelve? Uh, oh. <laughs> I've I love this, but no, you know who's like, I think this is the MVP is Chad Gable. This guy is so great. Why, why hasn't anyone shushed me on the show yet? This is the I was sh- waiting for, sh- I was waiting. <laughs> shush! But he's doing the shush from the Encino the Man, right? Encino fine. Man. That's fine. Oh, I didn't even know. Shock. The statue of limitations watch has Encino ran out. Man again. He's doing this shush. What do you mean again? Yeah. That's, mean that's, again. that's one oh, wait, thing you, I won't be doing is watching time. it again from, from when I was in sixth grade or whatever <laughs> that came out. Yeah, um, Gable is, uh, was great. Hit, I mean, him, the him buzzer bumping, thing was a bit, yes. the, the oh. buzzer thing went a little too long, but still him, great. Yes, yeah. but, the, but. The, bu- the bumps for the buzzer. <laughs> don't, don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I lost it. I thought it was, I thought it was so perfect. Randy, and it was commercial you know, free. Yes, it was yeah. commercial free on sci fi. spent the commercial free half hour on the buzzer. Right? Yes. It, we learned who the uh, who was the most games played as a Broncos quarterback was John freaking not, Elway, not Jay Cutler. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was Gus Farad. I was wrong. No, Gus Farad was in the mix. Um, <laughs> yeah, Randy's so goofy. It's amazing. R- Riddle plays his part perfectly. And I think Otis, who yeah, I didn't think he needed to change from lovable fat dude from back in you know the, the heavy machinery days. Now he's he's like respected badass fat dude, and it's crazy. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to see R- RK Bro broken up. 
I, I thought it was headed that way. <laughs> you guys with me? Like, let's keep this rolling for right? now. Yeah. For but now. Riddle, has to, for Riddle has to turn. I don't like Why? that. I don't the, like that. The, the only, well, there's a the thing. If he turns, he would have to be like mega heel and he's, he's the lovable guy. If Randy turns on him, he'll get face pushed to the moon. No, right? I think yeah. it needs to like, with I, legacy. I, but I don't, I don't want to. Everybody will. We've seen Randy turn before. We need. I don't want to see, see Randy solo right now. I'm having so much fun seeing them when no, the, the Grams so and the Owls. And that's what's making it good. Yeah, yeah the Grams and Owls. And, and when 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 Randy kind of messed it up, he's like, "You think I'm the only one who baked?" When he must have been like, "You think you're, you're the, the only one?" one? Yeah, right? yeah, you're but, right. But like, but like, but just seeing that, and you see Riddle, like just <laughs> the fun. It's just like. And then afterwards, you know, where it was like, do the shoosh, like yeah. to Gable. But like with Gable and Otis, Brian, you mentioned it. Yeah. Biggest thing I take from it, talent, who kind of gets shelved for a little bit. Completely. Reinvent yourself. Gable, how many times has he been, you know, uh, Shorty G? Jesus. Oh, right. Like, well, honestly, a like, that's a perfect example. Like. You know, he did he really go to full sale? Did he really get a 4.0? That's what I read. Yeah. Like if it's real, here's something that's awesome. That came out. Fun fact, this past Monday was Gable's first singles win on Raw in two years. Wow. It's been two years since he won a match as a singles competitor. That's sad. Kevin, they do have Alpha Academy tank tops on WWE Shop. Can confirm. Academy. Well, I have been working out. No, there it is. <laughs> no, I, I love everything about it. I, I love this feud. This feud, you know, yeah. you, you would think after the spelling bee and the scooter and now the quiz bowl, you think you'd be like, all right, let's let's maybe get ready to start moving on to something else, but I'm not. I'm not ready. I think this. I hope this goes through Mania, and then we'll go from there. But um, I was afraid. Love it was the chemistry. Be Viking Raiders, uh, Street Profits. Profits. Yeah. Yes. Right. Right. Lame. That work could go things. wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. Love the Viking Raiders. No, we do. We we didn't love the Street Profits. Like we're doing the, the free putt throw putt challenge or whatever. Oh, like, that. Cheesy, yeah. Okay. You know, okay. That. He's the, oh, he's yeah, the yeah. cute one or whatever. Like but a that, random right. woman would say each time. Yeah. That gets a free pass because it was at the beginning of the pandemic. Okay. And they didn't know what the heck they were right. Let's try anything. With. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're, we'll we'll get into that kind of fun segment that, that kind of inspired our uh, five count. We'll get into that in just a few minutes here. Uh, but real quick, next week, uh, NXT. Uh, they've been, uh, you know, not, nothing major has been happening too much lately, but we did have a Dolph Ziggler appearance this week. I thought that's a good spot for him. Uh, funny moment. I don't know if you guys caught this when. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Yes, hold sir. on. That was a good idea. To have Dolph what? Ziggler on NXT. I think I, I think that's a good spot for him. Yeah. Do we remember the Undertaker on WWE CW? Do we remember Ric Flair? Having an extreme rules match against the big show on WWE CW. <laughs> Do we remember Kane on WWE CW? This it, this can't happen. I it, it was I, AJ last month. It's Dolph this month. Who's it gonna be next month? And the month after Batista, that. Like, don't forget that one too. He was on WWE CW. Yes. Yeah. Like, oh, I know. That was the beginning of the downfall of WWE CW when they started putting the main roster people on there. And they're going to do this again where it's all new stars and we're creating all of our talent. But then we're going to have AJ Styles, and Dolph Ziggler, and who knows yeah. who's Yeah, you're not next. a fan. Not a fan, huh? Okay. No. Okay. No. See, that's – that's uh, this was like the very beginning of like the NXT – WWE Network stuff was like Cesaro would come down and uh, uh, what was it TJ uh, Natty's husband like would come Tyson down Kidd. even yeah Tyson Kidd thank you you know Zach Ryder came down he was still main roster but he came down did hype bro so I guess that's why I'm not like that offended by it I just feel the like the only one if you're going with that era the only yeah. one that makes sense for me is bringing back a guy a veteran like Rhino to come and yeah, okay. work with them, but don't take a main roster guy who's on every week 
and do the yo-yo thing. I gotta agree with Jason on this one. It's All a right. bad idea. I just I I think because Dolph and Rude don't really do it for me, like they're not involved yeah. in anything that I'm like, it's something for Dolph to do because he's still a good promo. He's great in the ring. He's just there hasn't been anything. It's been incredibly stale on the main roster. So that's the only part I, I was like, OK, well, he did so, say he lost 99 of the last 100 matches. So that yeah, doesn't sell him. Yeah, of, of course. That, that's no no disagreement. <laughs> So then have somebody who was the NXT champion come back instead of Dolph Ziggler. Have Robert Roode come. Big Bob. Big Bob. Big Bob. Look how well it did for Finn Balor. Furniture out last year. (laughs) Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. I'm I'm totally fine with that route too. I guess I'm I'm fine with it all. It's actually Bob's discount furniture. I've heard of that. Yes, I do. That was a real thing. I was like, that sounds right. Um, But there was a funny moment if you guys saw that part when he does come out. And uh, Ciampa comes out and he goes like, so listen, kid, is it okay if I call you kid? Ciampa is 36 years old and Dolph is 41. So that's, <laughs> that's, that's a good moment. Ciampa there. is only 36. Yeah. With that great he beard that older. he had. He I know. Wow. They, they made him dye his beard. It's not gray anymore. Um, but you know how that goes, Kev. You were sworn the gray a couple years earlier too. So, and now, and and now, now you're 40. Yes. Yeah. I'm only 36. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I'm if gonna... I call you kid, Kevin. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Thanks, Kev- Grandpa. Kevin's calling Jason Kid. I think actually, Jason Kid. He was a bad Jason Kid. kid. Right. Yeah, I didn't mean that like that. Um, all right, but now let me run down the card for you next week. Vengeance Day mm-hmm. looks really good, um, and we're not going to break down every match, but I just want to hear what match you're especially looking forward to. You've got uh, the tag belts for the women, Toxic Attraction versus Indy and Persia. You got Carmelo Hayes and Cameron Grimes for the North American Championship. MSK and the Cree brothers for the Dusty Cup. We got Pete Dunn and Tony D in a weapons steel cage match. And the championship, you got Braun Breaker and Santos Escobar for that championship. Uh, I will start for this one. Uh, Carmelo and Grimes for me. Uh, Carmelo, I think, is the breakout star of the NXT 2.0. Mm-hmm. Him and Trick, I think they have a great, great rapport. I think he's fantastic in the ring. And we've talked about, you know, how much we loved, especially over the summer, the Cameron Grimes million dollar man stuff and the LA night stuff. I love both these guys. That that's one does it for me. How about you, Kev? I, one thing I will say about the, uh, there's a little, you know, video package with trick and Hayes and like, I think it was a barbershop barbershop uh, on NXT. Those two fantastic during it. Every single person that was like, uh, uh, a person waiting in line or something. It was like, yeah. you got Hayes, you could get him. You could get him. <laughs> you could get him. Like, it was, it was so bad. Yeah. But like, Hayes just leaning back, just so cool and calm and collective and yeah. a star in the ring. Uh, I just want to make one point on that. I want to see him win and then Cameron take the loss and then somehow get propelled you know, to the main roster. That's what that's what oh, I want to yeah. see. I want to see... Love. To the uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, one 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 match I'm pretty pumped to see: MSK versus the Creed Brothers. Creed Brothers have oh, risen up <laughs> in in my eyes a little bit, but it's like, does MSK win back to back? You know, do, do they win back to back Dusty Cups? Creed Bros, can they win? Can that propel them? Because Diamond Mine's kind of, eh, right? It's okay. So it's yeah. it's I I look forward to that. Uh, to be honest, either one winning does it for me. I just think the match is going to be two different styles. Uh, there, there's going to be no losers in that match. I think, I think it's going to be fun, fast, and entertaining. There's a good, good angle for either one. I think you're right. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Jeff. I was going to say MSK yeah. and Creed brothers. That's the only one I'm, re- that's actually really the only one I'm really looking forward to. Cause I think this is a MSK redemption story after all the BS that they had to go through with the, uh, Fans booing them. Yeah, even though we they talked were, about like, that plants. when that was yeah. coming out. So yeah. I gotta, I gotta say that this is uh, the match that I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to. Win or lose, we got an MSK redemption story because they didn't deserve what they got. Jay, you got a uh, one match that's really catching your eye. Anything with Braun Breaker does it for me these days. Um, Escobar is awesome too. Yes, he is. I, I don't know if. Uh, we're going to get any outside, you know, shenanigans, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm down for Braun Breaker. It might be time to order that shirt. Yeah, that'll be fun. 
uh, uh, you know, this isn't a takeover, but we've always talked about how much we love the takeover card. So I think this will be fun. It's again on sci-fi. Uh, <laughs> so probably limited commercials again. So it should be a good night. At your DVR now, yeah. Kevin. Yes. It ought to, no, I, I, have it, I have it already. It's, it's on so, sci-fi. Yeah. So, okay. so my, like my internet cable, my direct TV now, like they just go by the show. Yeah, that's, so, like, that's oh, which is great. So that's that's Not why mine. it recorded. That's why it recorded this past yes. Monday for me because I totally forgot it Monday night. I was on Sci Fi and I went uh -huh. to it. I'm just like, no, I forgot. And then I'm like, for the win. Yeah, yeah. mine no, doesn't. Mine doesn't do it. So that's what happened. Mine does so when I for, set it for uh, the show, not the channel. Yeah, I said I was trying to set it for Dynamite. And I initially like went in my guide to TNT and I was like, oh, fuck, <laughs> I'm like it's DBS. And I was like, oh, yes, thank you. There's the dynamite graphic. OK, we're good. We're good. So like uh, the views. make sure we're, <laughs> we're all on the same page here. All right. So we talked just a few minutes ago about the greatness of the RK Bro Alpha Academy Quiz Bowl. That segment, again, has inspired this week's five count. This week's five count is your five favorite non wrestling segments. That Wrestling Podcast presents The Five Count. All right, so a couple qualifiers for this one. So, <laughs> I know I'm going to mess what? up somehow. What? Yeah, we're all going to be wrong on this one. Yeah, right, you guys are doing all the qualifiers. I don't know if I did it right. <laughs> I what? tried. I tried to explain it. We need to do a pre-show meeting for Kevin, me to just explain. Pick five these. of your seventy, and we'll pre-show meetings on Tuesdays. Oh before my god, the... <laughs> that's amazing! But no, so the what I my qualifiers were don't include like video packages, don't include just a promo, right? Like of just like I'm you know Austin three sixteen says I whooped your ass. No, I didn't want that. We want some in the vein of quiz bowls. It's something kind of out of the box. Something that's been on a wrestling show could be like on a talk show, could be a wedding. Th those sort of things was the vibe that I was going with. Um, Joe, you want to start? Because I know you talked to me before the show that you did prepare for this week's five count. And I appreciate that after last week's wow. unfortunate incident. I, I didn't think it was unfortunate. I thought I was fine last week, but um, <laughs> sure did. Very nice. you did say video packages, but it's like, I still think these ones, they might not have been live with a crowd mm -hmm. but they were non-wrestling segments that did yeah. bring us move us to our lawn so number five was the story of cameron grimes versus the million dollar man that damn ted DiBiase. wow okay uh, that's Love my it. number five of all time it's like every single one of them was so good yeah all those little skits yeah yeah okay so Love that's it. my number five was that it's like gotta give some props for that and it's more recent Yes. Uh, number four, I'm sure this is on everyone else's list as well. Uh, Team Hell No with Dr. Melfi. No. Fantastic. It was it was a was nominee, that no or but hell no. Joe? Not even the, <laughs> not even a thought in my it, brain. It was a well, it's, well, it's, number, it's number four for me. It's like it was it a was strong awesome consideration, but it did not make good. my five. Yeah. Number three, and I'm going with this specific one because they did so many good ones. Chavo and Eddie's lie, cheat, and steals video packages, but the one where they the baby cam and they stole the baby's bottle, the rattle, and the per <laughs> like that's my favorite. Wow, one I'll have to say time. that again. It's just like, oh my god, that was when I was like, I like Eddie, but that was a moment where it's like Eddie is the man. Yeah, because he's just like, hey, I got a bottle. Hey, I got the rattle. Why'd you take this? I don't know. But <laughs> number two. Not a video package, but it was... The oh, good, because that's not what you were supposed to do. I know. Um, beginning of the invasion angle, where Austin and Angle were trying to vie for Vince's attention and kept great. hugging him. <laughs> and Angle gets the little cowboy hat and goes, I feel like a real cowboy. Yeah. Like, that yeah. was... yippee ki yeah. Whoa, what that's happened, great. Jay? Uh, when what was his stupid like you know uh cowboy song that he sang? It's like Jimmy Crack Corns. Yeah. Jimmy Crack Corns. I don't care. <laughs> that's a great one. I got what? Olympic gold. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Great so that's stuff. my number two. Number one, Chris Jericho, conspiracy victim. 
when he went to the steps of uh, WCW. Uh, I remember this. WCW. He went to like the White House. Oh my God! And yeah. he actually read a letter that Ch- with me and Gene that he got from <laughs> Ted Turner. It's like, hey, Chris. Uh, you're doing a great job. Jane says hi. You know, things like that. Right, right. Like Chris Jericho, conspiracy victim. First thing I thought of when you sent the email. Oh, that's awesome. That is my awesome choice. favorite non-wrestling segment. Made him a star for me. Really cool. Really cool. Some good outside-the-box picks. Jay, Fantastic you're usually good with those too, man, with some, some of the ones I usually don't think are on my radar. So why don't you go next? Uh, number five, John Cena rapping at the Halloween party with Stephanie and our huge kids. <laughs> That's a great moment. <laughs> Absolutely. With the vanilla, vanilla ice, right? Yeah. 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 That's, that's one of the really put Cena, on, exactly. uh, put Cena on the map. And that's what got him going. Oh, uh, number great. four, May Young gives birth to a hand. Oh, my <laughs> Loved God. It. So ridiculous. Number yeah. three, 20 years later, the hand shows up at yes. a world reunion. Yes. <laughs> number moment. two. WCW Beach Brawl 93 built. It was the mini beach movies with like, it was Ric Flair and Vader oh. against Sting and Davey Boy Smith. And they, it would look like Baywatch and they blew yeah. up a boat. Yes. Uh, and, yep. and then I, I have a tie that. for number one. Um, when we started this podcast, we did these little intro videos. And one of my earliest memories was Jimmy Snuka getting hit in the head with the coconuts yes. on Piper's Pit. And that's tied with Edge and Lita's sex celebration on Monday Night Raw. That's my five count. Show me the boo. Awesome. Awesome. So your six count. Yeah, we, we usually shy upon that, but I'm, I'm going to be a little more lenient uh, as the host than you were, Jay, when we would Fuck off. do those. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm give, giving you props here. Go ahead, Kev. I, this is my my brainchild yeah. that I, I'm really proud of, so I'm going to go last. It, it's the, the coolest thing. Okay, so I made I made a 10. I made a list of 10. <laughs> And then I was Only? like, this one I actually thought of since since you mentioned this five count, Brian. Not one has been mentioned. Great. Good. Not one. And it's it's very cool. I had an honorary mention just in case one of my top five. And, 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 and Brian, after you go, if you want to know the other ones. Yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah. I'm, I'm just going to mention the, uh, the honorable mention. because I, I, No, I no, no. Another, no. I don't do. think Brian will. Okay. No, do so, your five and then we'll talk because I have a list of honorable mentions too. We can get into that. Okay, uh, uh, number five, uh, Hogan, Austin, and uh, uh, The Rock, WrestleMania oh. 30 kickoff. Just, oh, you know, we yeah. Made, we made yeah. fun of Hogan, you know, uh, mispronouncing the Silverdome. I'm in the Silverdome, brothers. Yeah. For, for so long. And it just, just it, it's still so funny uh, to this date. Uh, number four, DX invading WCW. The whole shenanigans was That's really, really great. cool. Yeah. Really cool and really fun. It was it was kind of like blurring those lines of, are they really going to get inside? They're knocking 100%. out the doors. Oh, are they really going to get inside? thought that was really cool. Uh, next one. This one came up because I, I know I mentioned this in a five count just a couple uh, episodes ago, but the price is right with Bob Barker and, and just the whole – on time so i started thinking of like every single guest host they had with raw and i always go back to bob barker and you know chris jericho jericho yeah wearing just wearing the name tag on his chest <laughs> uh number two joe i don't know if i was at your house for this but for some reason i feel like i was when brett and sean you know ha- took the handshake I, in the middle I of the ring oh, I, swear, wow. I swear i was at your house for that there's a, uh, I have to look it up, January 4th, 2010. Mm-hmm. Just, yeah. there's one of those moments where, you know, Joe's number one guy is Sean. My number one guy is Brett. And just being at Joe's house, and it was just, it was just such a cool moment. I remember Joe, and this is the reason why I think I was at Joe. I remember Joe saying, like, Brett looks old. I did. <laughs> like, when he's, when he's wearing his je- jean yeah. shorts in the, in the ring. Because he was number, old, yes. He's number was. one. He's rocking and rolling. Yeah. Number one. <laughs> I swear I still watch this multiple times a year since 2000 or uh, uh, since 2016. Miz just going crazy on oh. that game, Ryan on Talking Smack. When he grabs that belt, he's like, this is the never ending tour of this belt. Oh. He throws it on the ground. You see Maurice going like this. It's my time, my show. And you see it's like, 
perfect uh, veneer teeth just shining <laughs> right. Uh, and you see uh, Brian Danielson walk down off. I'm not the guy. Yeah, sure. cool. So amazing. Amazing. And then uh, you get Renee. Up. This isn't the point of the show. Yo, I love your show. You're doing a great job. But this is my time. Like, so good. And, and I feel that up to that point, was a fan of Miz, you know, but after that, that's, that's where, you know, he was, he was getting into the mega stardom right there. Now he's AJ, a, the biggest compliment in the world. AJ uh, even said earlier today <clears throat> on social media, or maybe it was yesterday. It was definitely this week. I have seven days uh, to, to be accurate on this. AJ was like, Miz is the best heel in professional wrestling has been for a while yeah. Uh, yeah. on top of his game, a game, nicest guy in the world, biggest heel in, in the industry. And, and that's just, Kudos to him. And, and to be honest, after the show, I'll probably watch the talking smack in the end. Yeah. Yeah, that was a moment. That was one of those that everybody went, did you see what The Miz did? Like, whoa, whoa, that was great. My time. The, yeah, you definitely know it worked oh. for. This is so good. Um, so and good. I'm so happy because none of my five have been said. This, is, this was such a great topic. I'm so happy we did this. All right, my number five. <clears throat> Uh, we'll take you back to the Monday Night Raw uh, before WrestleMania 19. This was the first oh. ever evening with The Rock, The Rock concert live in Sacramento. <laughs> oh, you guys no. know I'm a Sacramento Kings fan. The absolute best part, uh, uh, The Rock says, the absolute best part of being in Sacramento is in an hour and a half when The Rock is going to leave Sacramento. And uh, he does a little song. He goes, Sacramento, I won't stay, but I'll be sure to come back when the Lakers beat the Kings in May. And that was some heel heat that's fucking hilarious. Rock can barely stop from cracking up because he's loving it. That's my number five. My number four, I got a shirt for this moment. La Dinner Debonair. October 21, 2020, Dynamite, MJF and Jericho. And that's why it wasn't on my list. I knew you would say it. Thank you. Thank you. I had to include this. Um, You know, MJF, the whole story was he was trying to convince Chris Jericho to partner up into the inner circle. They go back and the the beginning's hilarious. They go back and forth, one upping each other on their order with their waitress, Velma or Thelma, right? They keep correcting each other. And it's like, I'll have mine medium rare. Uh, Velma, scratch my order. I'll have mine rare. Scratch my order. I'll have it bloody rare, right? They go back and forth and it breaks into a Broadway song and dance. (laughs) of my shadow and me and it just keeps going it's so catchy it's literally on my spotify i ripped it illegally you can sue me tony khan it's so good so that's my number four he just uh, tweeted he will yes okay is that part of the forbidden that door <laughs> my number three february 13 2017 monday night raw the festival of friendship Jericho, Kevin Owens. Jericho had just allowed Goldberg. There's that man again. Goldberg was challenging KO for the Raw Championship coming up at the next pay-per-view. Jericho proceeds to host a festival of friendship. He gives him a statue that they called the the um the Guggenheim. They have the creation of Kevin, which was the uh, Michelangelo moment, which got an unprompted yes chant from the crowd because that's how good that painting was. He brings out a magician and then KO acting all embarrassed gives Jericho a gift. It's a brand new list. This is when Jericho's doing the list. Chris is so happy. And then he says, how come my name is on here? And he holds it up for the camera and the fucking car uh, clipboard says the list of KO and you just hear the whole crowd go no and KO proceeds to beat the hell out of Jericho Corey Graves I I love this commentary on there he goes there were sure things in life death taxes and KO and Jericho being best friends and now one of them isn't a thing anymore and uh and a little, little callback to Jericho throwing HBK into the Jerichotron 2000 KO throws Jericho through the little TV with the festival of friendship. So man, was that so good? Uh, my number two, 
Piper's Pit, Andre the Giant, Bobby the Brain, Heenan, and Hulk Hogan. Andre was uh, a week or two earlier, was awarded a trophy for being undefeated for 15 years. And then like the week after, Hogan gets a bigger trophy for being the champ for three years. So Andre comes out in that ceremony to congratulate Hogan, says three years for being a champ is a long time and gives him clearly an extra rough handshake. Hogan's like, what the hell are you doing, bro? And he leaves. Next week, Piper Pitt rolls around. Hogan comes out. Jesse the Body, who was also hanging out with Piper, introduces Andre, who comes out with Bobby Heenan. And Hogan goes nuts. He begs Andre, you know, you're not with him. Tell me, you know, we're best friends. You can't be with this guy. You taught me everything I know. Heenan tells Hogan, Andre is sick of you and everything that you stand for. And Andre challenges Hogan to the championship at Mania 3. He rips Hogan's shirt off and his gold chain and walks <laughs> off. Fucking great, man. That's how you started the, the biggest WrestleMania of all time. And my number one, I, I got to think you guys considered it, right? But that's great that you picked different ones. Marty Jannetty, HBK, The Barber Shop, January 11, 1992. We don't have to get into it too much, but the rockers explode. Bobby's commentary is so great. I, I knew he was going to do that. He don't need Jannetty. I told you off and on. I told you there, Gorilla. And then, of course, Jannetty, he tried to dive through the window to escape. What a coward. And, of course, HBK at the end, ripping up the WWF magazine down the middle, saying, is there a problem with the rockers? I don't think so. And that just began the HBK to have the legendary career that he had. He's my favorite of all time. That's my number one. Uh, who else wants to share? Kevin, you said you had some, some honorable mentions. It's totally fine. Let's throw them yeah, out there. Cause I, I, I just had too. mankind, mankind on rock. This is your life. And uh, I feel like we've been making fun of uh, Steiner math for a long, long time. Oh I just, I just put that on there. This is kind of, like a comedy type thing, but I had a couple, uh, a few of yours, uh, but it was, everyone had unique ones. This was a fantastic. Yeah. This I don't think first... I had, I don't think I had one of any of yours. Nobody like, given my brain. Every... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like, but well, that's think, the thing. There's so no many. Had my top, Brian and I my almost had the top. Jericho that's... Friendship Festival of Friendship, but okay. I yeah. had too many Jerichos on there. So I went with Conspiracy Victim. Yeah, but yeah, I did. No, that's I great. did. I was thinking of uh, when DX was the corporation, and then The Rock came out and said, "What's my catchphrase again?" It's like, "Yeah, I dig it." No, that ain't it. To be oh, the man, yeah, you gotta yeah, be. Yeah. No, that ain't He's it doing either. All the, the, uh, the best there is, the best there was. No, that for damn sure ain't it. Like I had yeah. that one as a maybe. So my other strong considerations uh daniel bryan kane the therapy how about the stephanie and test wedding oh, triple h man. doing the drive through going hi right, stephanie mcmahon what a marry hey, come hey, on hey. like what is this um jake the snake crashes the macho man liz wedding reception oh, with a oh, snake yeah. coming out of the present um ah. yeah yeah uh, the the chuck and billy wedding that the chuck and billy wedding. eric bischoff had the uh, the makeup mask on and he was he just googled wwe church. weddings and those are all God, your that's um, how much i remembered <laughs> that i was like that was fucking great I and then the, the triple h all the apa uh card games sure. oh yeah sure. like I, those are the, just like those were fun they weren't memorable but it's like you just think about it it's like okay i'll give you that or those were all commissioner fun. foley yes yeah yeah those were funny at the gavel right the, those were fun I, the last one i had was um the Triple H and Steph wedding vow renewal, where it turns out Stephanie wasn't pregnant and Triple H calls her a no good lying bitch. I mean, fuck God, that's absolutely amazing. So, so many great moments. I'm sure we'll have another five count down the road that'll include all those moments once again in some other shape or form. Who made your five count? Let us know on social media using the hashtag TWP five count. Before we finish up this week, it is Super Bowl Sunday. 
Um, I think it's a fun matchup, the Rams and the Bengals, kind of some different teams. And, and Jay, you talked about it earlier. You know, we got, we got three of the four of us with some cool connections to this game with Jay being an L.A. resident. Joe and Kevin being Lions fans have had to watch Matt Stafford leave the Lions and take the Rams to the Super Bowl after years of underachieving in Detroit. Um, so why don't we go around the, the horn with your, your thoughts and predictions do we game. want to make this interesting? Do we want to make some bets out of this? What do you have in mind, good sir? Well, I think we can do a Price is Right style for the uh, score. And maybe we do this, you know, you pick, and then the score. Mm-hmm. What would be a third? What would, what would be a good third option for the win? The coin toss, heads or tails. You're not going to have two people picking the same exact score in team. Yeah, your chance, right? So win, winner, and score, uh, I think could be it. But now it's the what's the prize? Is it another T-shirt? Uh, is it Joe buying me a twelve pack of stadium <laughs> beers at SummerSlam oh, this year no. instead of the six he already owes? Oh, is this it... this could be the the, the <laughs> winner get the winner gets a, a a beer each at SummerSlam? A beer, a beer from everybody. Yeah, yeah, I Close. like that. For okay, the winner like gets. That. Well, so, will be wearing the Detroit three Lion shirt. No, yeah, not well, at the game. Not at right. I, not I don't at, care. He's still wearing the Lion shirt. That's all. Where did the bar the night before? I'll, I'll oh, wear sorry. my Matt my, my Matt Stafford Super Bowl champion <laughs> Rams jersey. <laughs> <laughs> he, used, he used to be on the Lions shirt, and Do that's not what happened. Be buying one of those lame Meyer brand uh, Detroit Ram shirts that are being sold. Right I've now. heard about what? that. And oh, that's unfortunate. What? Uh, it's the Rams and Lions logo. Morphed together and called the Detroit Rams with I'm Stafford see if number I can nine in the back. That oh, that's garbage! Funny, that it's is so ridiculous. funny. Stupid! It makes me embarrassed to be a Lions fan. No, wait, even, more? Because <laughs> even more? Even <laughs> more? Is that even possible? Oh no! I survived 0 and 16. I can survive anything. Oh my god! All right. All right. Kevin, so how, you how, how do you how do you pick your uh, uh, the thing? Because like, say if if you go first and you like. I want the Bengals, and their total score is going to be eighteen. How about and everyone I can go, just type I'm in the pick... score and the winner in the chat, and then just click enter? Oh wait, that's a good idea. You can't do that. I can't do that. Well, Brian, Jay could just say. How his about own. we type it in? Jason says his, and then we hit enter. Per- that sounds perfect. <laughs> okay, so Jason, you get to go first. Wait, and Brian, I'm glad you brought this up because I... I didn't even what, think about. Do you about guys? It. You guys have your phones nearby? Real quick, there, there it is right there on eBay. The Detroit Rams oh, shirt, hot off the that press. Is, that oh, is my God. That hot is off the press out of somebody's garage. Yeah. It looks like it's, shit. It's there, though. It's there. Well, it okay. Is, it is. It is what are we doing? I missed this. I'm sorry. Real quick, before we get into yeah. the Super Bowl pick, I sent you guys a, a screenshot. Denise Salzado from Fightful, she responded to Hangman's I'm Tired of Bleeding Every Month to I've been bleeding every month since sixth grade. Oh. Get on my level, cowboy. Oh, my God. That's unfortunate. <laughs> Denise rules. She yeah, is so we cool. Do like her. She, she's pretty awesome. Okay. All right. So, um, all right. So, I'm going to send my score to the text. Mine's, mine's ready to go. What, are you, are, Joe, are you sending in a text or in this chat? It's in the chat. Oh, okay. Well, then I'm not writing I it. I typed in the chat. it, and then we just go three, two, one, and hit enter. So everyone's chat. Okay. Goes in Can you do that, Jay, on your capability? No, he's going to do it on his phone, and we're going to. I'm going to do it on the text. Got it. Okay. All right. But then somebody needs to document this. Yes. Kevin, do you want to, Mr. Spreadsheet? Do you uh you can the, it, four four teams and four scores is more of a, a post-it note where these. <laughs> okay. Cool. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Three, two, one. Send. Oh wait! Oh, wait. Okay. <laughs> Kevin, just, <laughs> Kevin, Kevin just did the total score. So yeah, just that, score. it's prices right rule rules. That's what no, it's the, the, the score. Yeah, I picked the winner and the overall score. Oh, I that's what that. prices right rules mean. Oh, okay, okay, all right. Well, oh, I guess I bet yeah, without going all... over, like. Uh, Fuck it. I, I picked 2817 Rams. Okay. So, yeah. So, so, yeah. so anything, you would have 45. Add that up. Okay. Yeah. No, you're right. It's fine, Kevin. You're right. Because otherwise. Well, I'm the only one who chose the Bengals. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I... 
I think um, – I mean, I am – Rams got a little bit more like, on the defense two to and take care of like the Bengals. Ten this week. in these playoffs, so I don't blame you guys for going against me. Yeah. Okay. But uh, I, think uh, I, I I believe in the Bengals. Okay. So yeah, Kevin has Rams at fifty-one. So at, for me, with my score, I have sixty-one and the Rams, right? And so I have forty-eight in the Rams. Okay. All right. So now we know, and, and if the Bengals win, Joe wins in theory. Yeah. Right? The Bengals. No, win, if, I win, if, so if, if, if they win. 41 or more points he wins wait if he wins if the Bengals no, win the first and they is, score over 41 Joe loses that's what I mean that's that's what I just said yeah but then no one would win or just no, no, no. Score then, would the win. First then we all is, buy beers no 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 the first thing is the winner so step one winner of the game I think that's if fair, the yeah. Rams win. Oh, okay, I'm now this is a whole. This is a whole. Then the scores. Step two. <laughs> it was the, the, end Bengals, of the scores. Now, if the Bengals win, I'm the only winner. That's not that. That's not how it was perceived. Okay, whatever. But we that's can give it to I you, Joe. Joe, you can. You cheat, gotta get like something WrestleMania this year. last year. You, you gotta get something this year. So I've lost everything. So I know. Long. So we'll, we'll let you have it your way this time. I'm a Lions fan. Listen, I can't. Pick Stafford to win a Super Bowl. <laughs> are you out of your mind? I can't Seven live years. in a world that the Bengals are a Super Bowl champion either, as much as I think Joe Burrow's great. Did you have hey, Brett listen. and Harper make their Super Bowl picks? <laughs> no, we didn't. <laughs> I, mean, I thought about it, but uh, but Harper this was under is the, the weather. the first there. year that I live in a state that has a Super Bowl contender. Yes, you do. You have the to choose team. the state. Joe, Joe's just walking around his uh, his school, just going who day, who day, who day. He's all and about like, crazy. Give me that skyline chili. And, <laughs> give me the skyline chili. And who's, and who's, chili. What's the name of the quarterback, Joe? Oh, that's true. There's a lot of reasons for it. Oh, all right, he's the I can't, cool, I can't he must, stand. He's Stafford. the coolest Joe I, never, I I know. I can't stand Stafford. Never have. I, I don't care. I never know. like Stafford. It hurts, right. and, and every win hurts the Lions because of the trade. <laughs> that the, when they were going to get the Lions pick. So if they win the Super Bowl, they get the last pick of the first round. So it's like not even that great of a trade. All right. I, I don't know how we're going to solve this. We'll figure it out off the air. We're going to say goodbye for now. Of course, check us out at that WrestlePod on all the socials, the YouTube, the, the Twitter, the Facebook, the Instagram, all of the fun stuff. And I'm sure next week we'll be talking about Elimination Chamber and everything going on in professional wrestling right here on That Wrestling Podcast. Enjoy wrestling. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks for listening. Follow That Wrestle Pod on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. One, two, three, that's it. <laughs>